Don't mess with the SAS boy. Um, the back of the embassy we've got uh, we've got the abseilers making entry on the second floor and that's my team going in through the uh, the library window on the ground floor at the back and the wall mate is where the the hostages ran out and they were processed um, on the loan by the receiving team. Right. To be killed by Faisal was killed on the, the ground floor. He was killed running down those stairs. Had a grenade in his hand. I give him a good whack in over the back of the head and he rolled down into reception somewhere around here and then everybody shot him. I think he ended up with about uh, 40 bullet holes in him. Not bad really. Leader, terrorist leader Salem was killed on the first floor. Control burst, killed him instantly. No man, no problem. Reminds me of Hong Kong. Nice bit bit of kit for street fighting What happened in Hong Kong? I got flattened a few Portuguese gangsters and got caught and flogged What, a public flogging? No, I was done in Stanley Maximum Security Jail Yeah, my name is Pete Winner, I did 26 years in the Army, 18 years Special Forces I was at the Battle of Murbat 1972 where nine of us took on hundreds of communist shock troops. It was uh, Vietnam in the desert, uh, a modern day Rokes Drift, only those guys had more than spears. They had a full range of Soviet weaponry to include mortars and um, RCL. Um, it was meant to be a spectacular for the Adu. Um, they had been told by their political commissars that they would Breakfast in Murbat. This was the biggest battle I was ever involved in. Much bigger than the Embassy Siege, unfortunately. Just like the film, The Magnificent Seven, they didn't realise the SAS were in town. And neither did the terrorists at the Embassy Siege. Stan stormed in through the front door of the Embassy. Um, fired a burst of uh, 9mm rounds into the ceiling in reception. Overpowered PC Trevor Lock ripped off his police radio and quickly took control of the building. How complex was an operation like this? Well, to give you some idea, the terrorists themselves were armed with uh, submachine guns, pistols and Russian assault grenades. These weapons were brought into the country via the Iraqi diplomatic bag. They were controlled by an Iraqi intelligence officer, Sami Mohammed Ali, codenamed The Fox. The, the terrorists themselves were trained in Baghdad um, they travelled on Iraqi passports so you could say that this was the first skirmish that eventually led to the execution of Saddam Hussein see it on YouTube folks now it was only 11 minutes wasn't it to complete the task a lot more than that actually we, the diversionary charge went off at uh, 7.26pm and uh, we had more or less cleared the building at approximately um, 10 past 8 so we'll work that one out what's that that's about uh, 45 minutes approximately it was televised is it right that this is what Thatcher wanted uh, well yeah if, if you ever lived in the UK in the 1970s um, it was chaos we had the IRA blowing buildings to pieces people to pieces on a regular basis we had all sorts of uh, terrorist factions, the Libyans, uh, roaming the streets of London, causing mayhem. Uh, the, whole, the whole of UK in the 70s was, uh, what, what could you say, a terrorist um, uh, play area, if you like. So something had to be done to stop all this. And uh, once these, uh, the armed terrorists from the Front for the Liberation of Arabistan had took over the Iranian embassy, Mrs Thatcher suddenly realised that uh, this is an ex a perfect moment where we can, you know, uh, put a bit of stick about, show the world what happens if you bring your terrorist tactics to UK. You're going to end up on the slab. 
Now we're here with a replica model of the building itself. Whereabouts did you enter? Me personally, we entered round the back. We uh, ran out through the, the door of number 14, came along behind this low wall, and then eventually we smashed our way in through the window, two teams of four, and in through that window, the back of number 16, and that led into a library. Um, from there, we then went to our second objective, which was to clear the cellars and the reception area. What was the feeling? What was the uh, adrenaline rush like? Huge adrenaline rush. I mean, once you get the go, 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 get in on black, black being the code word for the rear of the embassy. Get in on black, that's the the uh, commander of the, the siege up in uh, the block of flats over to the uh, to the left of Ark there, shouting and screaming down the handset that get in on black, get in on black, because we did have one or two problems with the abseilers. One of the guys was... Um, uh, jammed, his abseil harness was jammed because he was carrying too much equipment and there was a lot of chaos on the second floor balcony so there was a big problem with them getting into the second floor they were held up, they should have been in mixing it with the terror, the, the meter was running you know we'd lost the element of surprise so that, get, that in itself gives you a big adrenaline rush you know you've got to get in you've got to get at it the meters running otherwise we're all going to get zapped let's talk about the battle of the battle of Murbat. what was your involvement with that me personally i was a 50 browning gunner heavy machine gun gunner and i was also the uh, radio operator it was like a war on a shoestring i mean where was the dedicated radio operator there wasn't one i was it and then at parts of the battle during some of the crucial parts of the no 5 -0 Browning because I was down on the, the radio set you know sending for reinforcements not good not good and uh, uh, during the battle I would uh, fire a quick burst of 5 -0 Browning at the advancing enemy then I'd run down to the radio room the radio shack send out a message for more reinforcements situation desperate race back up to the 5-0 browning another belt of 5-0 browning into the advancing enemy back down to the radio and on and on it went like this not good not good you also played your role <coughs> in the falklands and over in northern ireland haven't you yeah i was uh, done a lot of surveillance uh, in northern ireland i uh, got hijacked on the falls road in the uh, mid 70s uh, that was a bit hairy uh, Falklands, parachuted into the Falklands, um, got picked up by HMS Andromeda um, and uh, we, we ended up actually on a submarine two miles off the coast of uh, main, mainland Argentina. We were actually going to hit the beaches and then um, yomp, as the marines call it, yomp over land, we call it tabbing, tab tab over land to the, the nearest air, airfield at Pontus Arenas and blow up all the jets uh, on the airfield. Uh, it was the smallest uh, invasion force in history. All 14 of us. A suicide mission. But uh, luckily, luckily for us, we were just waiting for the green light uh, from Mrs. Thatcher back in the uh, in, uh, UK when uh, the commander of the submarine got the signal that uh, white flags had been seen flying in Stanley. Index, get me out of here. Uh, let's talk about your book now, Soldier Eye. You've recently relaunched it as an updated version, haven't you? Yeah, the original one, which was published in 1989, that one was heavily censored by MOD. Um, they didn't want certain things in about Northern Ireland. Um, they didn't want certain things in about Hong Kong. Various things they, they censored out of the original. 20 years later, well, 20, uh, what is it, 23, 24 years later, you know, I've rectified that. I put all the stuff in that was originally censored out, and now that uh, is in the the copy now available on the bookstands. Now, where we are, we're surrounded by a, vara a vast array of, of items. Do you think the MOD would want those censored, right? You know, in this day and age. Who do they want? Sorry, say that again. But for the some of the items that are on 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 show here, would right. they say would they want them censored? Well, there's not a lot that they can do about it now because there's a, a 30 year rule as far as secret operations are concerned. After 30 years, all the um, photographs, um, reports, has to go into the Public Records Office down in London. 
for anybody to read that's where most of the embassy stuff is now for the general public they can go in the public records office anyway and they can get to photographs uh, they can get reports for photocopy reports it's all there in the public domain so there's nothing really secret there are one or two areas that are a little bit uh, sensitive that are all kept quiet but the majority of the stuff all this stuff that you see on display you can get a lot of it or most of it in the public records down in London so that there is no real problem. And finally you're going to be giving an exclusive talk in the Forest of Dean next month mm -hmm. um, to get people there what, what, how is this talk going to be I mean is it going to be very in your face? It certainly will it'll be a blow by blow account from the man who was there basically I'll be up on stage and uh, I will go through the various days of the siege, starting from the Wednesday, going through to Bank Holiday Monday. Then I'll go through the assault, with what part I took in the assault, uh, the, 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 the killing of the last uh, um, terrorist, the terrorist Faisal, who was caught on the stairs with a grenade and he tried to blow us all up with a grenade, but we sorted him out and that was the last terrorist to be killed. He was. Uh, Salem, the, the terrorist leader, he, he was Salem's uh, second in command. Um, so I'll be explaining all that in detail, my involvement in the, um, uh, neutralising the threat of uh, the grenade, um, all that kind of stuff. And then afterwards uh, I'll do a Q&A session where the audience can fire any questions they want about the SES. Um, anything not secret, then uh, I should be answering those sort of questions.